Hello networkers and welcome back to another episode of Ask the Network Engineer where I will answer one of your questions. And this question comes from Tanya Brown or Taz and she asks, can you maybe create an episode in which you talk about life or work in a NOC, please? And a NOC stands for a Network Operations Center. And luckily, early on in my career, I definitely worked as a NOC engineer which I talked about during the job titles episode. So let me talk to you about what a NOC person does in that particular experience. So when you're working in a network operations center, you're usually doing it for a technical company or an ISP. So for me, I was a NOC engineer at an ISP, an internet service provider. And that was a really good perspective of learning really how customer networks connect to the internet and how that worked. So that was a very good learning experience. So when you're working in a knock, of course, as you probably know, that you work on a shift. And it could be the morning shift, um, the daytime shift, uh, evening or late night, depending on which shift that you have. And starting out, you usually get like the night shift. The more common shift to get is working during the day where you're working from like nine to five, typical hours that most of us wants to work at. I worked in the evening shifts. I worked like from like two or 3 p.m. and kind of late at night, like nine o'clock at night. That was perfect though. Also keep in mind that when you're working during the day, it gets more hectic. You get a lot more calls and a lot more issues that you're working on. And sometimes the issues that you're working on, a lot of them start popping up towards the end of the day, like around four or five o'clock when you're starting to wrap up your own shift and pass it down to the next team. So I never really liked that. I did work the day shift a couple of times, but I did not like um, that particular handover because a lot of customers called in at the end of the day trying to wrap things up to work on issues. So usually those people worked a little bit longer than people who worked the evening shift, which did not get a lot of particular calls. But it's kind of a good thing because you get more experience that way. When you're working during the day, and getting that hectic schedule of working and resolving issues. That's how you gain your experience as a network engineer. So what were some of the things I actually did in the NOC when I was on a particular shift? So what, how it usually happens is, is that we get a phone call from customers that have their equipment there in the data center. And their equipment is located basically within a cage or cabinet. All depends on the size of their network. And they use something like a NOC environment where the customer does not have to be on site. They just call into some support number and they can say things like, hey, go to our cabinet or to our rack or to our cage and do some stuff for us on the equipment. So that eliminates them being on site, which is really a good thing when you are a customer. And of course, it gives you that hands-on experience. So we usually get the calls that comes in and pretty much the help desk, they create the ticket and the call is handled or passed to us where we start to work on the particular issue with the customer. So a lot of things that we do is we reboot customer equipment. We do a lot of rebooting uh, with routers, switches, firewalls, servers, whatever they may have in their cage, something that they cannot do remotely. So we do that a lot. But we also do customer configuration with the assistance from the customer itself. So what happens is the customer can say, hey, our router is down. Uh, can you go ahead and console in to our, to our router or to our switch and check out the configuration? So we go ahead, we get our laptop, we plug into the console, and we run various commands based from the, what the customer tells us, or if we're comfortable with that. It all depends. So for me, I love doing that kind of stuff because I'm, you know, I'm, early on to being a network engineer. That's what I wanted to be. And I'm gaining exposure to actual customer networks, seeing how they're configured, how they're operating for web environments, e-commerce environments, great learning exercise. That's how I always interpret it. So we used to console in and look at the routing tables, configure interfaces, configure VLANs, run debug commands, great things, but that is one of the things that we did while working in the NOC, which is really, really good. Or we do configurations that we recommend to our customers that do not have that kind of experience. So usually it depends on the NOC engineer and what they're comfortable with. 
So at that time period, I finished my CCNA and my CCNP, or maybe halfway through, I'm not really sure. So I was very comfortable with Cisco equipment and I wanted that exposure of more configuration. So sometimes there were customers that would ask us um, that an IP changed and they need assistance configuring or reconfiguring an interface on one of the routers and they have no idea how to do that. Well, that's fantastic. So we will get those calls and with the right person who is comfortable with that, we will go to their cage or to their rack and we'll console in and reconfigure an interface. Uh, I've done a lot of configuring access control lists for customers. So sometimes they get like a particular DOS attack coming into their network and they have no idea how to do ACL configuration. So we're like, okay, no problem. So we may run a debug, do an IP packet um, detail against a particular ACL to see where the, the attack is coming from and configuring an access list and applying it to their WAN facing interface. Those are some of the few things that we actually did. But we did a lot of configuration that we recommended to the customer that did not have a networking experience. And this is something that I brought up before, but we've done a lot of replacing equipment. So if there's a, a bad router that has, that has failed for a customer or a switch or a firewall, they sometimes, probably the bigger customers, they have spares, extras right there in their cage. And they tell us, hey, uh, can you unrack the old or the bad router, take that out and put in the new router? And that's what we do. Sometimes this is replacing a existing router with something better. So we're learning how to do, uh, how to mount. We're learning how to replace things and how to, you know, we're getting day center experience. So really when you are a knock engineer, you're getting a lot of particular experience in a lot of different areas. So that was really, really a good thing is replacing equipment that the customer may have. We also did a lot of troubleshooting of internet slowness. That was a big one that we usually get. That a customer would call in and they indicate that access into their data center is very, very slow or to their network is very, very slow. And they're looking for assistance for what is going on. So we do a lot of trace routes, we do a lot of ping tests, we do a lot of validations to their servers we're confirming if they're exceeding their bandwidth that is allocated to their cage, because sometimes that usually what happens, that they're doing a lot, that they're doing a large uh, file transfer right into their cage, and they're exceeding what is allocated um, for bandwidth, their feed into their cage, and we, and we, of course we tell them that. So we look at the IP accounting details on the interface. So we do a lot of that. Is uh, troubleshooting slowness that a customer may have and usually it is because of latency or because of congestion. So that's also some good troubleshooting tools that I personally gained while working in a NOC. Another thing while working in a NOC, which is something that I personally remember, is the free time. Now this depends on what shift you actually worked. So again, I really worked the later end of the shift, like from five to you know, like three o'clock to like uh, nine o'clock or 10. I forgot what the time frame was. It was a long time ago, back in 1999. And um, so again, you know, there's a lot of quiet time, but I also worked the weekends. I worked on Saturdays and uh, that was, you know, that could be a bad thing because you're like, oh, you're working on the weekend. When you're starting out in technology or with networking, that's fantastic because the weekends were always quiet. So what did I do? I studied. I studied vigorously on uh, getting certified. And at the time was my CCMP. Actually, I think I finished my CCMP because I was preparing for my CCIE written exam during that time period. That was a long time ago. And um, that's what I did during my weekends. I studied, I got lab experience because we did have some equipment that we could play with for gaining, you know, for like testing or for other kind of stuff like that. So that was always a lot of fun. Uh, that was also the environment where I would also mentor a lot of the security guards there because they wanted to do something more. And they always asked me questions about being a network engineer. And I love answering those questions because I'm like, well, I'm not really a network engineer yet officially, but within a month or two, I would become a network engineer within that environment. So that was a very, very humbling experience. 
And I loved teaching those guys really what I've been teaching you guys since the very beginning. I just love doing that um, because this is something that I'm really passionate about. And if people want to put in the work with the advice that I give them, I really think that's really uh, a good thing. So again, during the quiet time, I studied. I got hands-on experience. I studied the configuration. Think about this. I'm working at an internet service provider with hundreds, hundreds of customers connected to it. And we had big customers. We had Google. Google in its very early stages were, um, well, one of their presence itself was in that data center. They had, they had a huge data center and it kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I remember Google when it was very, very small. It's a very kind of good story I like to tell people that I, I saw Google when they were just starting out and now they're just gigantic. So I used to basically learn from the configurations from customers that I worked on. It's, it's nothing much for that but also for the backbone routers, for the ISP networks, their access switches. I learned, I studied that configuration and I built it within my own lab to gain that experience. And that definitely paid off a lot. So because my next job was really um, being a senior network engineer very quickly because of the experience that I had in the NOC. And that's what the underlining message is when you're working in the NOC, that it is a stepping stone to eventually become a network engineer. But you gotta take advantage of all the resources that are available. When things are quiet, don't read a sports magazine or just surf the net. Study, take advantage of that time of certifications, but learning from the actual configuration in that environment. Learn from that, duplicate that on your own lab network. That's what I did and that gained me a lot of experience that made me a really good network engineer very quickly in the years to come. The one caveat that I did not like while working in the NOC was the other high level network engineers. I made this comment, I think a couple of times in other episodes in the series, but I worked with people and I've seen people that were very, very rude and would belittle um, people in the NOC or the help desk. I mean, they talk down to them. They're insulting to them. And that always bothered me. You know, they never did that to me um, because I probably would have voiced my concerns that you don't do that to people. And I always, I, I, I really think that was the company, that was the environment where I said, I am not gonna be like those network engineers because they were really, really mean to a lot of people. They made a few people cry and they had no reason to do so. And I personally remember that I was going to be interviewed to be a network engineer. And I was, and I was being interviewed by the network guy that everybody respected, but he was very rude and no one really, well, looked up to him. He, he was a big meanie head, as, as some of my friends called it. But I remember being interviewed by him and he, he, he threw out the tough question. He threw out questions about DNS and OSPF, and I nailed it. I was intimidated by him because I was thinking to myself, no, I'm not intimidated by someone who tries to belittle people. And I think it was that particular experience in that company that made me say, no, I am not going to be that type of network engineer. I'm going to be a better network engineer technology wise, but also as a mentor, because there's no reason to be um, rude towards people that are trying to learn and advance in their career. And I think that's probably why I really believe in the mentoring of other people who want to be network engineers, because I've seen how they have been defeated by people like that. And over the years, I have still seen a few network engineers that are, are exactly like that. And I would usually confront them and tell them, you can't do that. You know, that's not the right thing to do, you know. Be nice, be a good person. So that's something that I, I did not like about the knock environment, but it was also a blessing because it shaped me for who I wanted to be as, as a mentor to people that wanted that information. So not trying to get too political with that, but I just wanted you to share with you my experiences because in some cases that does come up here and there in some environments. And I just want you guys to be aware of that. 
that if you see a network engineer that is very, um, very cocky and um, very rude, don't let that person get you down. Just brush them off and stay focused on what you want to accomplish because you will do it. That's all that matters. So again, my experience in the NOG has really been good because it gave me experience with troubleshooting, experience with different customer networks, which is really, really good. And again, as I mentioned, that really gave me more experience of understanding the big picture of customer, but also with ISP type environments. So working in the NOC as a stepping stone to be a network engineer, that's definitely where you want to begin. And we are finished. So Tanya, thank you very much for the great question. I hope that answers a lot of what you were looking for. And I want to hear from you guys. So post your questions below in the comments about anything in the networking field or being a network engineer. And your question will come up in a future episode on this channel. So thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe and check out our other training that we have at rodhub.net. We release new training updates every single week. And of course we have new training packages that we release every quarter. So we always keep things uh, refreshed and very interesting from a practical perspective. That's, that's our main focus for the training that I provide is practical training. That there is a place for certification training, but there's also a place for learning. How do I configure a firewall for the common features and aspects that is typically deployed in the real world? That is our focus at RodHub. So thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.